Hello, uh, this is Logan, and this is my prospectus presentation here, along with my PowerPoint. Uh, so, this research problem I had here is based on the perceived barriers uh, and fulfilling the duties as an officer for the Effingham County FFA chapter. And so, this this research here is an applied research, and it's specifically applied to my current chapter team, chapter officer team. So we'll go ahead and get started through this. The importance of this research that I've started here and will continue to, to work on is it started based on a high turnover of ag teachers at Effingham County. Uh, the past couple years, they've had some musical chairs probably over the past five or six years. And so the students uh, lack a little bit of a foundation of what they need to do, what they're expected to do. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, next bullet point there, similar to what I just said, current officer awareness of an effective officer team. Okay, so what I've noticed over the past few months is some students, you know, are, are not taught or, or we haven't, they haven't learned what it means to be an effective officer. Um, no problem to their own and so that's what this research is meant to do is how we can effectively increase their efficacy of that um, current student involvement in our chapter uh, not necessarily related to the officer team but also to the members um, and i personally believe and, and I hopefully the research will show um, that part of this has to do with sort of some turnover rate COVID being in there did not help. And also the officer team not not being great recruiters as well. Um, and so, you know, our member participation lacks. Um, another one that this research is, is hopefully going to help is there are two, 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 two brand new ag teachers at this school, myself and another one. Um, and next year, this year, we were lucky enough to have a veteran ag teacher help us and was currently still here for a few classes. But next year, she will be moving to a newly charged school. And so it will be two second year ag teachers. And so I think this research will help us understand, and like my last bullet says there, it is important for the teachers as well as the students um, is, is what this research is going for. Here's a little bit of just previous research um, that I've gathered and I sort of used in this PowerPoint specifically based on my entire prospectus. I have many more um, citations that were used in my literature review, but these are three um, that I really base on this, okay, and I really used a lot, and so those are here. So an introduction to this um, introduction is that the officer team lacks the knowledge needed to be effective. Okay. Lacks the knowledge, lacks the skills. Um, and so we want to try to figure out where they lack that knowledge at. Um, to first year teachers, the researchers will be used, the research will be used for this team as well as future teams. The purpose of this research is to gather the perceived barriers in fulfilling the duties as an officer for the Effingham County FFA chapter. In layman's terms, what do they struggle with and why? You know, why do they struggle with it? Our review of the literature that we looked at to kind of get our minds thinking about how we want to go and study this. Okay, so we looked at school-based ag, ag education as a whole. We looked at the classroom and laboratory instruction, supervised agriculture experience programs, and the National FFA organization. Okay, those are, um, that's one section. We looked at the duties of an FFA officer team based on the National FFA handbook. Okay, um, I deemed it that to be the most um, concrete explanation to an officer team. And those of you that have experience with your own officer teams, you understand that each school does it different. 
Okay, each advisor has their own expectations. Each school has their own expectations. Each community has their own expectations. So for the purpose of this literature review, I have used the explanation based on the National FFA Handbook. Um, and then we came into common barriers to student success. Okay, and, and this is not like this is early research. This is short, this is applied research. Okay, and so this is not every barrier to student success. When I doing my research on my literature review, socio socioeconomic parent slash parents uh, was one of the main categories that I have found for barriers to adolescence. Okay, probably no surprise there. Financial financial barriers, again, probably no surprise there, and technology. Okay, there's not a whole lot of research on this one. Um, and so, but I do think it was something deemed necessary because that is an issue. Again, this is applied research. And so I decided to put technology in my literature review because I can see that as an issue with our current officer team and our current FFA members. I see technology being an issue. Um, although technology can be a lifesaver sometimes, it is also an issue. So there's a little sneak peek at the literature review. Methodology. Okay. So this is how we decided or I decided to go about this research. Overall, this is a mixed method of research. Two phases. Okay. It started out as a qualitative research that was used as inter we used interviews to gather data okay so i interviewed each individual um i will interview each individual separately and record the interview okay i will then take the interviews and me and the other two other two advisors will code these interviews we will listen and we will listen for um, various concepts various words and we will code those together to create categories of where our officers are struggling what categories so the reason why i'm doing these separate okay based on research i run into the fact that if i did a mass interview with the officer team i would get the concept of group think was occurring so meaning that say our president wants to say one term okay well then i would worry that sometimes the whole officer team would then jump on board and say that's our issue you know that's the problem is we're just our, we're just busy or whatever it may be so doing this separately with each officer to me will create a sense of validity okay in a sense of reliability and it will allow each officer to think freely okay not based on what their peers are thinking okay so that's an idea of that's one way that i'm cr increasing valid validity and reliability is having them do it separately okay the second thing is when each advisor is coding these uh, interviews when we're listening for key concepts common words we are going to do this separate i'm going to take my recordings home all the recordings home the other two teachers are going to take all the recordings home or do it at work whatever and we're going to listen and we're going to code that and we're going to write down concepts that we hear and that we understand and that we can categorize together and then come back and then we will compare and for the same reason, okay? I don't want to say something and then that be the only way that the other two advisors think. I want them to have their free mind. And, and if I say the issue is time management or overworking or whatever, I don't want them to also say that. So with this research, that is two ways that I plan to um, increase validity and reliability is separate our qualitative data collection. Okay, um, 
So yes, that is the two phases overall. My participants, you've probably gathered by now, are is the FFA officer team. There are four females and two males. Um, not sure if that's going to make a big difference. Don't plan on getting any results and findings based on gender, but I thought that was important to put in there. Uh, their grade levels, that is one thing. Um, so their grade levels, one is a senior, one is a junior, two are sophomores, and two are freshmen. Okay, so I that is in the prospectus. Did not include that on the PowerPoint. Probably should have because, again, I don't know if there will be any findings or results, but based on age, based on mobility, okay, we, we think about our students being 16 years of age and driving. That could have something to do with it once we get rolling into this, this data analysis. Okay, but let's move on to qualitative interview. There will be individual interviews, like I said before, code categories and concepts, and record interviews. Okay, so uh, we're, I'm individual, individually interviewing each officer, and then I will listen to that, uh, as well as the other advisors will listen to that. We will code that data to find those concepts that we want to then use to drive our quantitative questionnaire, which is next. So our quantitative questionnaire, I plan to use Qualtrics surveying. Okay, I plan to have five categories five questions per category. I have pinpointed and went more in specific in my categories in my prospectus writing, but I can name those off. The first category will be based on FFA. The second will be SAE. The third will be um, the third will be their ability to have work-life balance. Okay, how they balance. See the second SAE. The the third will be, excuse me, how they feel they work as a team and how they feel the officer team works as a team. The fourth will be um, the fourth will be questioning about how they feel about balancing FFA school jobs, sports, you know, driving, homework, things like that. And the fifth, and to me, I believe the most interesting category will be based on the participant's opinion on how the advisors perform. Okay, how do the advisors perform and how do we, at the end of the day, lead this program? Okay, and I think that's something that is important. I said at the beginning of this, this research is not only going to be utilized to increase the efficacy of our students and our officers, but also increase the advisor's knowledge on how the students feel about them. Okay, and it's one thing to note, I should have put it in here, is this survey, the quantitative survey, will be completely anonymous. Okay, so the kids are going to have, you know, It'll be completely anonymous so that the kids are not scared to say something about an advisor. Um, you know, oh, he doesn't do a very good at planning. Okay, I don't know who said it. You know, so that could be in there. And I'm hoping that that will increase, um, I guess I'm still using the correct terminology, validity and reliability and give the students a sense of, honest, you know, they can be honest with that. That's, that's what we want there. Okay. Uh, the answers will be numbered. So they will have the ability to answer either a one, two, three, or five, or one, two, three, four, or five, five being great, you know, the highest, the best, one being the worst. And this will allow us to get a numerical mean and put a number to how these students feel about specific concepts. Okay. For example, how well do you believe you perform opening ceremonies? One being terrible, five being perfect. Okay, so if we are near five, 
Okay, if our numerical mean is close to five, we're good. I don't, I don't need to work on opening ceremonies with my officer team. Okay, that's what we're getting at there. Whereas that numerical mean is close to one, that's something I should probably pay attention to. Okay, and then our analysis, and this is the important part. This is where we want to pinpoint lack of confidence. This is where we want to figure out, hey, what do we need to do over the summer? What do we need to do at our cult conference? What do we need to do with our future teams to increase their confidence, increase their efficacy, and at the end of the day, for us to do a better job? Um, I think that's really important as well. Um, so we want to pinpoint that. We want to create programs. I want to create programs to target that. And I can use this data, create graphs to show, you know, hey, we're spending too much time trying to master opening ceremonies. Our kids got it. You know, they got it. They understand parliamentary procedure. They've got it. We need to spend more time on, you know, helping these kids balance their schoolwork, balance, you know, applying for college, balance, stuff like that. Okay, so I think this, and this will allow me to show the other teachers, show the CTA director, show the principal, hey, this is why we're doing this. Now, I didn't just wake up one day and think about it. You know, we're doing it based off research, based off numbers, and that's why I really enjoy this concept. Okay, and won't get on that rant too much. We'll move on. Looking at data analysis, you know, this is similar to just another page of what we did. All three advisors coding the qualitative data, create a Qualtrics based on the qualitative data to drive the quantitative data. Okay, is that that that's what we're looking at here? You know, we've we've gotten the qualitative data, and we're going to use that to drive our quantitative data. So we're getting the big concepts up here with our qualitative data. Okay, we've got FFA, we've got SAE, we've got work-life balance, time management, we've got, you know, teachers spontaneously saying, oh, we've got this banquet practice or something today. So we've got our big ideas up here with our qualitative data. We want to let that drive our quantitative data to try to put that in the numbers. Um, and then last but not least, we'll utilize that numerical means to rank the importance of concepts. Okay, we, we, I've already kind of discussed that. Here's just a few citations um, that I've used in this PowerPoint specifically. One, two, three there, and another one, two there, okay, to finish us off. And that is my research perspectives. Um, I plan to utilize this research. I plan to implement this research in hopes to better this program uh, and to also give myself data in my back pocket to present to school officials and administration if they ask why we are doing a certain thing. Okay, so thank you.